Okay, and it's officially recording. All right, well, let's go ahead and get rolling. Um, welcome. Uh, I appreciate you guys showing up and uh, taking some time out of your day uh, to just kind of check in with us. Um, and uh, I got a couple things for us to talk about today, nothing too crazy. Um, I got a PowerPoint we're going to go over. We're going to talk a lot about uh, practice schedules and game planning and things like that. And then um, I got some film with some drills that we'll watch uh, a little bit together. Um, and uh, then we'll finish up with some Q&A at the end, and I'll share my contact information uh, for anybody that has uh, any questions. So um, I'm going to start off sharing my presentation. Um, so here we go. All right. Okay, so uh, hopefully you guys can all see the PowerPoint. Uh, if somebody doesn't, for any reason, you can always unmute yourself and say something. Uh, but I, I think I got this figured out. Um, so thanks again for, again for coming here tonight. Um, my name is Jose Lucero. I'm the head football coach and athletic director uh, at St. Mary's Catholic High School uh, here in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, and uh, we're going to be talking about uh, practice planning and drills uh, and the multiple shotgun double wing offense uh, is going to kind of be our focus. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So a little bit about me and kind of our high school, just give you guys a little bit of background because uh, I, I know I have not met anybody personally yet. So um, first of all, about myself, uh, entering my 16th year of coaching, um, coached uh, junior college level, high school level, been an assistant, uh, been an OC, uh, been a head coach now for a few years and so on. I was an offensive coordinator specifically for four years and I ran a little bit of everything, everything from pistol to spread to option, uh, things like that. Um, I am now uh, entering my seventh year as a head coach, uh, so it actually went by pretty fast. Um, and this will be my third season at my current high school, uh, like I said, which is St. Mary's High School located in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, this is going to be the uh, third season. We've run this offense now for two seasons. Uh, we had a once in 2017 and once in uh, 2021. And uh, you might be wondering why I kind of have the, the gap there and why we haven't run it every single year. Um, you know, we've kind of had some different weapons, and I've been at some different places, uh, but I've really settled into the offense now here at my, uh, my new school. Like I said, entering my third season here, um, and really love what we're doing. Um, you know, last year was kind of a, uh, a unique circumstance. Uh, believe it or not, we entered the season as an air raid team, uh, and we had plans to throw the ball a ton. Had an extremely talented quarterback who's going to be playing football at uh, uh, Jamestown University next year, uh, so we're excited for him. Uh, but unfortunately, he got hurt game one, and we had to, uh, like a lot of small high schools do, had to take our middle linebacker and move him over to start a quarterback. And uh, we immediately began the transition into this offense and uh, didn't look look back. Uh, ended up having a very successful season, made the playoffs, and so on. Um, so about our high school, we compete at the 4A level here in Arizona, the 4A high school level, which is the third largest in Arizona, uh, 6A being the biggest. Uh, our school has around 480 students on our campus. Uh, most of the schools we play uh, are set around 1,300, um, so we're a small private school. Uh, we do petition up uh, to play at the 4A level. Um, I think we'd end up being either to the top of 2A or bottom of 3A if we stayed where we were put based upon our enrollment. Uh, but we do like to pet petition up, challenge ourselves a little bit. Uh, our school has a long history um, of success with over nine state championships. Um, and uh, in the most recent history, our first year as I, uh, taking over the program, uh, my staff and I uh, have uh, kind of got things turned around. It had been a while uh, since we'd gotten to the playoffs. In the last two years, we've made it to the quarterfinals. Um, and this last season, uh, running uh, this, you know, multiple shotgun double wing, uh, we're, you know, uh, about 30 seconds away from upsetting the team that eventually went on one state championship. Uh, and a lot of that I attribute to uh, – you know, our kids, and then obviously the offense that we're running and the, how it puts us in a position to be successful. Um, so it, it's been good for us. All right, so um, <clears throat> what is this offense, this multiple shotgun double wing offense? So uh, number one, um, we believe it's an offense that allows us to attack. You know, uh, we've, we've all probably heard the expression, uh, take what the defense gives you. Well, we like to talk about attacking what the defense gives us. Um, and so that's kind of our mindset with the offense. Um, in our mind, it combines uh, the elements of a few key things, uh, the double wing, um, the old under center double wing, the wing tee, and the spread kind of into one offense. Uh, as far as the double wing is concerned, uh, just like that, power is our number one bre bread and butter play. We ran that play, or at least a variation of it, uh, the majority of the time in our run game. Uh, we want to make sure we start our offense establishing power each week. Um, it's kind of our go-to play. Uh, 
from the wing team, we like to, we think we borrow a lot of the misdirection. Um, and we like to also build our offenses, uh, packages around backfield actions and different series of plays uh, to try to put defenders into conflict. Um, and then obviously uh, we take the number one pass playing football boot uh, from the wing tee. We're a big boot fan uh, when we do line up and try to throw the football. Um, and then from the spread, uh, we do incorporate some air raid passing concepts into our offense. And I've posted about a couple of those things before. Uh, we do run Y stick. We want to ride or Y cross. Uh, we do run a uh, wide corner. Um, we run some spacing concepts uh, in, our, in our passing game um, out of our traditional uh, shotgun double wing sets. Um, we also have some packages where we have pre and post snap RPOs uh, that many of the uh, today's offenses are running. So uh, we can feel like we kind of borrow from a little bit. All right, so let's get into kind of today's uh, number one topic, which is going to be practice planning. You know, we did a little poll uh, and these are the things that were voted for. So with practice planning, and I'm speaking from a high school high school perspective, um, you know, we, we play on Friday nights with our varsity team, and then we pretty much have uh, Monday through Thursday to get prepared. Saturday is our film day, and we'll talk about our weekly schedule. Uh, if you're a youth coach, obviously your schedule is going to be different um, and what you're allowed to do during the week. So you obviously can take what we talk about today and, and, and just apply it however you see fit. Okay. So as far as planning is concerned, Here's kind of our, our general thoughts. Uh, number one, we are big believers in having a plan each day we step on the practice field, and we believe in staying consistent with that plan each week. Um, part of the biggest mistake uh, young coaches make uh, is they kind of feel like they can go out on the field and, and wing it a little bit. Maybe you played before uh, or you've been, you know, uh, coaching for a little while. And you feel like you got it down and you, you know what you want to do. No matter what, we have a plan. Like I said, entering into my 16th year, I still make sure every single day we do it. We do on an Excel spreadsheet. We have a full plan of everything we're going to do, um, and our all our entire coaching staff has that with them. So we're all on the same page, and we want to have a plan. We want to stay consistent with that plan. Uh, we want our players to practice with great tempo, and we feel one of the best ways to do that is to accomplish this is to have a solid routine each week for our kids to follow. Um, you know, we do try to change up what we do a little bit each week, but for the most part, part, our kids understand what a Monday looks like, what a Tuesday looks like, what a Wednesday looks like, uh, what a Thursday looks like. And that consistency kind of takes the guessing game out of what they've got going into the practice. Um, and uh, it allows them to uh, practice at a high tempo. They know what the drills are. They know what the expectations are for the drills. Um, they know the, the tempo or the, you know, the level of contact we're looking for in each drill. Um, and so we want to make sure that we're consistent there. And finally, uh, this is just kind of a general thought here, and I put a picture of it up here on the PowerPoint. If you do not have a segment timer, I highly recommend getting one. Um, this picture is the exact same one I have. And this one will run you about $1,500, um, to be honest. But if you can find one uh, that, that's cheaper or something like that, I, I, it will change the way you practice. It'll change your tempo in practice. Um, it'll get all of your coaches on schedule. Um, I highly recommend it. This one you can charge and you can leave it uh, unplugged and it'll run for your practice. Or if you have a power source nearby, uh, you can just plug it in. Um, but highly, highly recommend, um, you know, getting yourself a segment timer of some type and, uh, and checking this out. So that's kind of some general thoughts. All right, so let's talk about a typical game week and, and what that looks like for us. And again, we're a, we're a high school varsity football team. We play on Friday nights. This is what our typical game week uh, looks like as far as um, time frames are concerned. All right, so day one for us uh, is very uh, kind of our, one of our longer days. Uh, we practice for an hour and 50 minutes or what we refer to as 22 periods. Okay, we, we break our practice down into periods, not necessarily times. Um, and uh, we have 22 periods on our Monday practices, our day one, uh, day one of the work week. Again, your, your schedule might be different. Uh, you might play on a different day. So your day one, if you're a a freshman coach who plays on a Wednesday, your day one might be Fridays or something like that. So it might be a little bit different for you. But our day one, an hour and 50 minutes or 22 periods, um, it's kind of our big get after it day. Uh, day two, very similar uh, as far as the, the way the number of periods we go. We do uh, incorporate a few more different special teams on day two. Um, so it does take away a little bit from offense and defense, but I think special teams are important, so we make sure we hit them. Um, but same length, 22 periods, day two. Um, and so that's kind of our, our second day. On day three, okay, uh, we now start to shorten our, our, our practice times down a little bit. Um, we, um, we now practice for an hour and 30 minutes or 18 periods. 
Um, and with the 18 periods, uh, we typically try to get done some more special teams. Uh, we make sure we focus on offense, defense, and there's a lot more group type stuff. And we'll, we'll show you some stuff here in just a minute. Uh, day four uh, is our kind of off the clock day, um, what we call it. It's our pregame day. Uh, we want to get in, get it right, and get out. And so for those days, we don't really time it. We don't use our segment timer on those days. It's one of the few. Um, and we're more about practicing at a high tempo, getting things right. Um, what we actually do on those days is we try to time practice and uh, the kids compete that they can get everything done right the first time and try to beat their time from the week before. Um, so it's a little bit of fun for them, it kind of forces them to focus up, makes it a competition. Uh, they seem to enjoy it. Day five for us is game day uh, and how you run your game day is going to be typical to you and your school and, and what your expectations are. Day six for us, this is our post game day. Um, so this for us is a Saturday. Um, we usually have bring the kids in. Uh, we put them through a, a workout. Uh, we obviously uh, watch some film, but we are, are blessed enough here to give them an opportunity to eat a little bit of breakfast too. So um, we kind of get those things going as well. So that's kind of our, our typical game week and what it looks like, uh, days one through six, and how we try to treat each day as far as length of practice uh, and things like that. All right, so some practice planning tips, okay? Uh, things that we want to touch on real quick. Um, number one, keep everybody moving. Okay, even if a kid is holding a bag, he's still more engaged than he would be than just standing there. Uh, try to limit the lines you have in your drills. I uh, try to get kids involved in some way, shape, or form. Um, have multiple groups going at, at, at the same time if you can. I know if you coach some younger athletes, it, it can be a little more of a challenge because they can get a little uh, restless uh, standing there. So keeping them focused, keeping them engaged can be uh, uh, something that will really be beneficial for you. Um, Discuss practice plans the night before you leave for the day. So, you know, we finish our Monday practice. We start talking about Tuesday and what we want to do, what we need to work on, what we liked from Monday, what we didn't like from Monday. Um, and so we want to make sure that we have a conversation before we go. We put together our tentative plan, and then that plan will get sent out to everybody um, so that we have an idea before we even get to Tuesday what we're doing Tuesday for practice in the afternoon. Um, so that's a big one. And then uh, next, every coach needs to know what their job is on each each play, you know, for example, or each, each practice. Um, for example, we're doing team offense. Um, every coach on offense has a responsibility. My old line coach uh, does a great job. He runs our scout defense for us. So that's his responsibility. Our running backs coach, he will spot the ball to kind of help with the tempo of the practice. Our quarterback coach, his job is rotating personnel and groups. Uh, and then our head coach, uh, our offensive coordinator, will obviously call the plays. Uh, and communicate with the quarterback. So everybody kind of has a role and responsibility there. Uh, and make sure it's all taken care of. All right, and lastly, you know, we say stay on time and coach on the fly. You know, we want to make sure that we're not spending the time stopping all, everybody else in the field to try to coach one kid. Uh, if you can rotate them out and somebody can pull them real quick, coach them quickly, coach them on the fly. Um, I know it kind of depends on your situation, but if you have the ability to film practice or film it in some way, shape, or form, if you can review it later, that would be great. Um, we're lucky now in today's world that we all have smartphones and I've been that guy that's been out there with my phone and filming things and, uh, and doing it that way or having a coach stand up on top of a bleachers or bring a ladder to practice uh, to film on a phone. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can get it done if you're lucky enough to have the nice equipment to film. Um, obviously, you can go that route as well. Okay, uh, So those are kind of some general practice planning tips. Okay. So what we're going to do next, we're going to go ahead and, and do and discuss kind of some schedules, and I got some things for you. Um, so I'll stop sharing the presentation, actually. Okay, um, so pull this back here. Got a couple people trying to join in as well. Okay, I'm going to mute everybody's mic. All right, we just got a couple of coach, coaches that joined up with us. All right, so um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead now and present, like I said, some practice schedules and show you what we have. And guys, I'm telling you right now, when we're done, I will be happy to share uh, any of this stuff with you. So we're just going to look at some different practice schedules. Uh, you'll see my whole screen right now. Um, but like I said, we'll get a chance to take a look at this type of stuff. Okay. All right. Okay. So should be able to see my screen now. So when we talk about our practice schedules and things like that, this is what our, our Monday schedule looks like. Now, to give you a little bit of background uh, on what we got going on, um, our team, the way we do it at our high school, uh, we only have two levels. We have basically a freshman, sophomore, we call our junior varsity team, and then we have a, a varsity team, which is going to be you know any, anybody in your program that can play varsity football. Um, 
So we split it up that way. So that's how our schedule is designed. Uh, you can see the junior varsity on the right and the, and the varsity on the left. Um, but this is how we kind of set up our schedule every single day. Um, you can see the period numbers going down each side. Each period is five minutes. Okay, so every single period that you see on there uh, co uh, coincides with five minutes of real time. Um, and so that's how our schedule breaks down. That's where that segment timer I, I talked about before uh, can be so valuable because it keeps everybody on schedule. Uh, everybody knows exactly oh, we're period nine. Uh, we should be seven on seven and inside run. You know, we're you know period five. We should be starting EDDs right now. And so this is what our typical Monday looks like. Um, you know, Monday, again, is kind of a, one of our, our bigger, more physical days. Uh, we'd like to start off with some sled push and things like that, and we'll talk about those drills. But this is how we kind of break down our Monday practice schedule. Again, 22 periods. Uh, starts off with specialists, which is snappers, holders, punters, kickers, all kind of doing their thing. Uh, you'll notice up here we have our meeting time slated as well. All right, so this is kind of our Monday, and it includes, again, both levels. Okay. Uh, one of the things we do as far as practice planning is concerned, and this, again, every single coach is going to have a copy. Um, and it helps them with, you know, kind of working through as we script everything as well. Uh, we make sure we have a script for every session. So this is what our practice script uh, it looks like every single day. So this is kind of a typical Monday uh, that we have going on. So this is just from a, a random week this season. Uh, we have our team session listed out. OK, and just kind of give you an idea of what the categories are. We have uh, the play number in this first column. We have the hash mark. And again, my running backs coach is his job to put the ball in the correct hash right, as we're running the play. Uh, the W is our wrister number. So we, we signal everything into our quarterback on a wrister. Um, and so that's what the, the, the wrister number is for him. Um, and uh, so that's how that works. The personnel, we have different personnel we rotate through. Uh, are there normal or speed personnel or whatever you want to call it? Um, we have those groups that kind of go through. Um, we have our, uh, then our formation. Uh, we number our formations. Um, so one and two is our base shotgun double wing set. Uh, three and four, the word fly is the motion for us, but these are all our different formations. And then obviously the play call. This last number right here, uh, where it says defense, this is going to be for our uh, scout defensive coordinator. Like I said, is my old offensive line coach. Um, he has cards that we print out and he shows the scout defense and they line up. So we can kind of control what defense looks we're going to see or how we want to run it. Um, so that helps us out quite a bit there. Okay? I think I got somebody just tried to come in. Okay. All right, so that's a Monday. Looking at Tuesday now. Okay, so Tuesday for us is a little bit different because our um, JV is not practicing with us necessarily because that's their pregame day because they play on a Wednesday. So they're actually removed from this schedule. But Tuesdays, like I told you guys before, it's still 22 minutes. Um, it's our 22 minute or 22, 22 period practice. Um, but now we are including uh, different special teams. Uh, they're a big part of it. So we still have our specialist period. So every day, uh, you know, for Monday and Tuesdays, our, our day one and day two, we want to snap and hold and punt and kick and all those different things. Um, but now we have punt, which we work, and then we have PAT field goal that we work. And that's every single Tuesday. Every single day two of our progression, we're working that. Okay. Uh, Tuesday, again, is, is a big work day. Uh, we have our fence drill, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, mesh and different drills that our O-line does as well. Ball security day is a big day for Tuesday. We want to make sure we spend some time doing some ball security stations. Um, and we have our power period on a lot of our Tuesdays, and then obviously finish up with team. Okay, and then you can see the defense has their part of the schedule as well. Um, one thing I'd recommend, uh, because it's it's free for, for anybody to do it, is uh, we use Google Sheets for everything. Because the best part about Google Sheets is they got this little share button up here, uh, and it allows you to share with your entire staff. So one, they can see it, but I can share this with my defensive coordinator, and he can go on there, and he can edit, and he can change things. Uh, I can share with my offensive line coach if he wants to include notes in his part of the, the practice plan, he can. Um, and so that, that's a big thing for us. Is we share it all, uh, with, uh, we use Google Sheets. Um, and again, it's free. You just got to create a Gmail account. Um, so that's, a, that's something you can take advantage of as well. Again, practice schedule uh, also has a practice script. Okay, so you can see the script here again. Uh, Tuesday, we've added a few different more fronts. Okay, um, still the same basic setup, play number, hash, wrister. Uh, personnel grouping, formation, and so on and so forth. Uh, and this is our power period. Okay. Next one is our Wednesday schedule. Okay, a uh, little bit shorter now. Um, so for Wednesday, we get out, we hit the stretch right away. Uh, we don't hit specialists at the beginning of this day. Um, we get to our stretch period. Um, after stretch, 
Uh, we get right into offense. Uh, usually our day to work routes on air. It's probably our, uh, a little bit less of a physical day. Um, at that point, we've had two pretty heavy contact days. We start to kind of pare it back a little bit uh, towards the end of the week, so we're fresh for Friday night. Um, so we go routes on air, different uh, down blocks, things like that. O-line, he usually hits their blitz pickup. Um, and then our team session, not pretty simple, but it is a shorter practice. Uh, we do spend some time here at the end going over kickoff and kickoff return. All right, so the main special teams we always hit every week are going to be punt, PAT, kickoff, and kickoff return. Those are the four you're guaranteed to run every single game. Um, everything else we will hit um, on our Thursday practice. We make sure we hit everything and talk about different scenarios, uh, but that's kind of the big thing for us. Um, you know, we in the past, we have done things throughout these first few days about red zone offense and things like that, but, you know, being in this type of offense is, you know, multiple shotgun double wing, uh, your red zone offense is going to be no different than your backed up offense, and it's going to be in the middle of your field offense. Um, if, if you can run power and you can run power well, you're going to keep running it no matter where around on the field. Um, you know, and so that's one of the things that's pl the big plus about this. Um, and then when we rotate uh, the cards through, we, we can throw in some goal line looks as well. So we can rotate different fronts in here, and we can throw some goal line stuff, and we can just practice at any point. Um, so that, that's kind of beneficial. This is a Wednesday script. Uh, we really just have our team session that we'll focus on that day. Um, that's our big one, so we script that out. Um, every coach gets a copy of the script. Every coach gets a copy of the schedule, uh, and that's how we make it work. Okay. Thursday, okay, this is what our Thursday looks like. Again, I said it's an, we are off the clock on Thursday, so the kids have an idea. They know what we're going to do every single day. We hit every single scenario we can. Um, we start with specialists, and then we go goal line offense, goal line defense. We practice the coin toss so we can talk about uh, what we're going to do, whether we're going to defer or take the ball. And then we run our kickoff team out, our kickoff return team out, and we work that. We work punt, PAT field goal. And we work Raiders, which is our punt block team. Uh, we talk about our onside kick and our hands group. They get an opportunity to go out there and work. And so you can see how it kind of goes. We have our two-minute or end-of-game uh, end or end-of-half defense. We have our NASCAR offense, which is going to be our no huddle. Uh, we got a you know, two-minute offense. Um, and if we find ourselves in a situation we got to go, we work on that. We work on spiking the ball in that situation, everything we've got to do. Uh, and then we run a little bit of team defense versus scout, some offense versus uh, the air. Um, we're in some, we'll talk about punt block and punt safe for the week, uh, which are usually pretty consistent throughout the year. All right, we work on victory formation. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so that's kind of what our, 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 our typical – Thursday is going to look like uh, our pregame practice is not on the clock. It's about going out, executing. The kids do a good job. Um, one thing we do that I, I didn't really mention earlier, but uh, Monday through Wednesday, we are, with the exception of the beginning of the year, we are just in helmets and shoulder pads, and the kids wear a girdle and obviously their basketball shorts. Uh, we don't go full pads um, after you know we get to the beginning of the year. Basically, our pre our preseason scrimmage is the last time we're in full pads. Uh, we stay just in shells. Uh, I'm a big believer of not taking people to the ground. Uh, that's tackling and, um, you know, blocking. Uh, we don't pe take people to the ground. We want to stay up and stay healthy. Um, you know, we, we do tackle hand shields and bags. We can work on, you know, gator rolling and things like that. But uh, we'll, we try to be really smart keeping our kids healthy throughout the year uh, so they can go and play and excel on a Friday night. Um, so that's kind of that schedule there. Now, then lastly, this is this something I want to share. This is my, this is my Friday night call sheet. Uh, that we piece together throughout the course of the week um, and uh, with the calls that we still like. And we have it broken down by wrister. Um, you can see here, this is what our quarterback's wristband looks like. Sorry, it's really zoomed out right now. Um, but this is what our quarterback's wristband looks like. Um, so we give him the color, we give him the number, um, and he makes the call um, in the huddle. Um, we are a huddle team on Friday nights. Um, we don't really run too much tempo stuff. We have a couple different calls we can do. But we do like to huddle and uh, grind the clock at when we can. Okay, so that's that right there. Okay. All right. Okay, so <clears throat> gonna go back to showing my uh, presentation here. Okay, um, and and give you guys an idea now. Talk about some drill work uh, that we do. Hold this back up. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see the. The PowerPoint, it should say drills right now, okay? So looking at, at drills and talking about the drills that we do uh, every single week. So there's a couple ways I want to look at it. All right, so first of all, um, every coach knows that there's certain drills, and they pretty much have, like, their four key drills that they want to hit every single week. 
and they want to make sure that they get done. And so you can see kind of broken down by position. These are the things that we want to work on, the skills we want to work on. You can call them your EDDs, your everyday drills. Um, you know, we don't do them every day, um, but we, we hit them every single week uh, in some way, shape, or form. Um, we do like to pride ourselves on trying to be more of a multiple shotgun double wing offense. So we do some things with our passing game that maybe traditional double wing teams don't do as much. Um, but uh, here, so here's kind of what we got. So uh, first and foremost, we see with the drill number one for the uh, quarterbacks, running backs, our wings, and our fullback is mesh. Uh, we do mesh drill um, constantly. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty much a daily thing for us. I have posted on it before. We're pretty much, we're just running our plays, no line. Uh, sometimes we'll take a center. Sometimes we won't have one. We'll just have somebody flipping the quarterback a ball. But we hit mesh pretty consistently. Um, that's a pretty important drill for us uh, to work on the timing with the motions and things like that that we do. Um, again, for that same grouping, quarterbacks, running backs, wings, and fullbacks, uh, they always hit routes on air. Sometimes we'll hit them during pre-practice. Uh, sometimes we'll hit them during the, the actual practice schedule. Um, that's usually a good drill for a Wednesday, which is kind of a least contact type of day. Uh, we want to hit routes on air. So we're running our corner routes. We're running our, our country routes, our, our Y cross routes. Uh, we're running our stick routes. We're running some fades because we do like to take shots, and we want to make sure that you know our kids are comfortable catching a ball over the shoulder. And so we take some time to work on those things with those position groups. You know, our fullbacks are running their shoot routes out of the backfield and their flats. Um, so we do a lot of those things. Uh, anybody that's a ball carrier, um, we want to make sure they're working some ball security. Okay, I didn't put in the tight end column, but they, they make sure they get some ball security in as well. Um, and our coaches do a good job uh, rotating them through stations. Um, that's usually a good Tuesday drill. They do ball security stations. And then the last category for those guys uh, is going to be uh, kind of position specific. Um, our uh, quarterback will do different drops and footwork, uh, kind of more traditional to any other quarterback on the shotgun. Our running backs and wings will work a lot of down blocks. Um, our fullback will begin to work a lot of kickout blocks, especially for power, uh, working on his angles uh, techniques. Um, you look at the O-line and D-line, sorry, and tight end categories. Uh, they work down blocks and double teams. Obviously, those are big in the offense. Uh, we work different pulls, and we got a couple different drills we do for that. I'll show you one on video here in just a second. Our tight ends will work routes on air. Uh, they are uh, kind of our primary receivers in a lot of our, our passing game. Uh, and then our O-line does spend some time working blitz pickup. I'm sure you guys know with the offense we run, a lot of teams' answer is to try to load the box and send a lot of pressure. And if we're throwing the ball, we need to be prepared to pick up blitzes. And so we do spend some time uh, talking about that each week as well. Um, so here's some other kind of key drills that we do. Uh, and then I'll show you the video of some of the more like individual drills that we run. Um, one of the things we do, and we do this every single Monday, it's kind of our first team drill, is we do a team sled push. Uh, and for us, it, it's, it gives us a chance to focus on technique and driving our feet and staying low. But it also is a, a something that sets the tone for the week and, and for uh, that practice. We want to get after it. We want to build the mindset that we are a physical, physical football team. You know, and, and to be honest, you know, uh, 20 years ago, uh, you know, things were different. They used to do drills like bowl in the ring and things like that. Well, that's not the world we live in anymore. And so this is something that's safe for our kids, which is good. Um, and it allows them to come off and be physical uh, and, and, and work on some good technique, but at the same time setting that good physical tone. And so we do a sled push and hits everybody, our quarterbacks, our wing backs, our old line tight ends, we're all there. And uh, we're hooting and hollering and, and getting after it, hitting the sled. Uh, and that's where a five minute period, everybody gets about five, six reps in. Uh, we get after pretty good. Uh, we have a power period that we run. This is just a five minute period, but we run it with no huddle. And we try to get as many groups as we can going. And we try to run as many plays as we can in five minutes. Uh, but we're just running every single variation we can of power. Uh, and the biggest key is, and this, the person who has the hardest job is probably the old line coach running the scout. We want the front to change as often as possible. We want to run power versus a 4-4, a 3-4, a 3-3, a 5-3. Uh, anything you could think of with blitzers, without them, with people walked up, we want to just be able to run power no matter what a team throws at us. We have to be able to run power. Power is what makes kind of the it's 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 the, what makes the car go, so to speak. And so for us, running power against every single front, we have a five minute period just to run power uh, in a number of different ways that we run it. Uh, the fence drill. This is a this is a really big drill for us, and I think it's one that you can kind of go from high school down to youth. One of the biggest things that young kids struggle with, and I'm working with our incoming freshmen right now on it right, uh, as they're starting to learn the offense, is everybody wants to run things wide. That's not going to be what we're trying to do here. And so we run our fence drill where we use our sled. I got a video that I'll show you what I'm talking about. 
It teaches the ball carriers where the play should hit. Uh, it forces that tight angle. Uh, it, it forces people to take good angles on their kickout blocks, things like that. Uh, we use our sled as our fence, um, and, it, and it allows us to be successful. All right, uh, another drill we do that's really good for us is we call it our inside run and seven on seven period. Uh, rather than treating those two separately, we try to kill two birds with one stone. So this is a 10 minute period where we do seven on seven and have inside run going on at the same time. Your numbers may not allow that, and that's that's okay. And you can maybe adapt this to where you want, but this is how we do it. Um, so it starts off with our first offensive skill unit and our first O-line, and they are working uh, inside run together. All right, they're together for the first five minutes. While that's going on, the second offensive skill unit and as many other kids as we can get are running scout defense, and they're throwing seven on seven. After five minutes, we switch. All right, the skill guys switch, and we have the second skill guys that come over, and they now will run inside run with the second offensive line. All right, and we try to rotate guys as much as we can in there, um, get people playing scout. Everybody's got a job, um, and uh, so that's a good period for us. It allows us to get a lot of things going on at one time. Um, we do try to film that. Uh, we're very, very lucky to have a, a volunteer that films every practice for us. Uh, he has a big, uh, tall uh, pole that he uh, puts a camera on, and then usually we film inside run with my phone, um, and uh, we get it done so we get a chance to film everything for the kids. And right, then obviously we do team. Uh, during our team, we do not huddle, okay? Uh, we try not to huddle as much. We want to make sure we get a lot of plays. Um, you know, Early on in the season, we might huddle a little bit more, but you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, huddle mechanics are great, um, but that's something that we don't want to spend too much time on at practice. That could maybe be a pre-practice conversation, um, but uh, we try not to huddle as much. You know, we get the wrister out there to the quarterback so he can look at it. He starts barking the call out. Uh, we want to go, go, go and get plays done as fast as possible. Um, it also helps with our conditioning. You notice on our schedule, especially as we get deeper into the season, we don't have a conditioning period down to practice. We condition as we practice, and we want to get plays done. So even though we huddle on a Friday night, on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we want to be on the line, running plays, getting things done, uh, knocking out as many plays as we can and maximizing our time. Our longest practice is not even two hours. Uh, and we have a lot of things we need to get done. And so our tempo practice really helps that. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead. Uh, what we'll do now is we're going to take a look at some of the drills. And this will kind of be the last thing I got for you. Um, so I'm going to share that screen here real quick. Um, I hope it comes through okay. I know uh, sometimes uh, the video has a hard time coming through, but we'll try to make sure we share it. So you guys should see our huddle page now. All right, and so let's talk about a couple different drills, um, and then um, and then we should be good to go. So I'll just pull the first one up. So the first drill we're going to take a look at all right, is going to be our fence drill, okay? Um, and when we talk about the fence drill, here's what we're referring to is going to be our sled serving as our fence. Okay, so we're going to have this here, and we're gonna, just going to run our offense. We're going to put some scout guys out there um, holding hand shields. If we're in pads, obviously we're working with pads. But we're using this as kind of our deterrent to keep anybody from bouncing the play outside. Okay, so here I think we're just running power. Okay, and so we're running power to our back, and it teaches our pullers to keep stay up inside the hole. It teaches our ball carrier right, to stay up inside the hole. Um, and I think that this is something that's been really beneficial for us um, as, as far as drills are concerned. Uh, we do adjust and modify depending upon the play and the front we want to see. Um, but, but this has been a big one for us. So we run this. This is a, a typical Tuesday drill. We go over, we hit our fence drill. Kids know exactly what it is. All right? And our pullers know that it helps them learn to be tight. Okay, so again, here's kind of same same look. Okay, just running power. No tray. Okay, working on our pullers being nice and tight up through the hole. Okay, so this is a big one for us. Okay, so we'll adjust it too. So now we're going against like a, a more of an odd three, four type front. So before, and I, sorry, I should have mentioned this already. In this particular look, uh, we're running a play and we have our tight end right, set up so that he is outside, um, outside of the, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the, he's just outside the bag. Um, so in that particular case, and we'll run in power or counter, we make a tank call. So this is just a different look. Right? So sometimes he'll line up there. So we'll tell the tackle to set himself up on the, on the fence. Or on the on the on the sled. All right, then now we have our tight end set up where he's got his outside shoulders where the fence is, and so we're running the play versus a different look. So we can kind of change it up depending upon what we want to do, what we want to see. 
Okay, so that is our fence drill, okay? Okay, the next one here, this is gonna be a, a big drill for us and for working our poles, all right? And so one of the key things we talked about when we were pulling, and this is for, if you're pulling on Trojan, if you're pulling on Buck, if you're a backside puller on power, one of the things that we really emphasize is you've got to get depth and you've got to run, okay? And you can't you can't be like going slow through the hole. It's just gonna impact the entire play. So we talked about getting depth and getting and, and turning and running. And so what we do is we take our uh, tackling donut and we use it for an offensive emphasis. And we have the uh, the uh, offensive player. So this is our tight end right here. Uh, we have him lined up with his feet no deeper than the middle of the of the of the donut. All right. And so he'll turn and he'll run his pull. He has to open up and get depth. All right. He's going to rip his arm. He's going to open up and get depth, and he's going to run through the alley. Then we don't work, work about, you know, breaking down and blocking anybody. That's not the, the purpose of this drill. This is just about turning and running. And uh, a lot of times, especially given our splits and, and how everything is so compact, if you can get guys up through the hole, uh, you can make guys move, it's going to be beneficial. If you don't have a tackling donut, Take one of these agiles and set it the same way. Make it run behind the agile. There's a number of different ways you can work this. So it's a simple drill, but it teaches the idea of turning and running. Okay, just turning and running. All right, being an athlete. Okay, notice his first step. He's getting great depth on that first step, working away from the line of scrimmage. All right, so he's not going to get caught up in a lot of the mess that happens uh, in the plays. This is one of our tackles. Again, same thing. We're just having him turn and run. Okay. He does a good job as well. Another coaching point we emphasize as you're turning up, you want to snap her eyes inside. So my old line coach is standing right where a linebacker could be. So as our puller's coming around, we have him snap their eyes back to the guy uh, that he could block. So eyes inside as he's coming through there. Okay, same thing. All right, we have our guard now. He's lining up towards the front of the bag. Okay, no deeper than the middle. Working on getting his depth, eyes around, eyes inside, coming in, looking at coach. Okay, so good drill for us there. Okay, and we're just teaching the principle of running on your poles. We got to make sure our kids are athletic and can move. All right, so this is just muscle memory. Great drill to do during the summer. All right, when we're out, we've got no pads on. Um, there's a little bit of conditioning. They're getting there's a little bit of a short sprint in here, and they're working on some technique. Okay, for our double teams. All right, we work our double team. So there's a, this is kind of one of the basic ways we set up our double teams. Uh, we want to have a defender, all right, and we want to have a postman, then a down blocker. Uh, these two are going to work the double team on this combination right here. But one of the things that we preach is that we want to get a push on this defensive lineman. We want to get a vertical push. Okay? We're not overly concerned all the time about getting off to a linebacker quickly. We want to get a vertical push first. Our splits. Being so compact, it does eliminate a lot of run-throughs. Um, and so that's a big benefit of the offense that we run and how we run it with our foot-to-foot -foot splits. So what we teach our guys, as we said, we want two hands on the bag or two hands on the defender, all right? So our uh, guard here is going to take his hand and put it on the inside shoulder. Our tackle is going to take his hand and put it on the outside shoulder. So we said we want two hands and we want four eyes on the linebacker. Okay, so two hands on the defender, four eyes on the linebacker. We're going to talk to these guys about trying to get hip to hip and trying to keep our shoulders square right? as we're looking to get a push and we have our eyes on the backer. We talk to our kids. If a backer fills, we scrape off and then he takes over on his own. But if a backer wants to flow over the top and we're running a double team, okay, and we're typically double teaming on power and counter, if he wants to flow over the top, we have pullers for him. So we teach our guys. Do not come off this double team for a guy that's floating over the top. That's not our responsibility. Okay, so these guys will just stay on this double team. I didn't work that double team and get a vertical push. Okay, if he wants to come here, typically we got a tackle or a tight end or a guard. All right, somebody pulling for that linebacker. Okay. Same thing. He wants to scrape over the top. We leave him. Okay, we're big preachers in trying to keep our shoulders square. Okay, we do not want this deep offensive lineman, excuse me, to turn his shoulders and create a bigger hole that needs to be created. All right, we feel like we got some big, wide kids. All right, we want to use that to our advantage. We really preach a lot about keeping our shoulders square as long as possible and as much as possible. 
Okay, in this particular case, linebacker triggers, so the guard does a good job of coming off. I'm right, picking up the linebacker. Two hands, four eyes. Two hands, four eyes. Tackle sees the linebacker step up. He knows he's taking over the block now. Two hands and four eyes is a good way we preach it. Okay, same thing with this group here. Linebacker triggers. Got our hands in the right spot. Two hands, four eyes. Okay. So that's kind of how we work double teams. Okay, for our wing down blocks, we'll set the drill up just like this. And we use you just kind of use all of our wings. And what's nice, and we talked about it before, have everybody have a job. So they can break off into groups of three and they just need one hand skill. One guy's going to be the imaginary tight end. He's really not doing much, but he's given a place for our wing to line up off of. All right, somebody's going to be the defender, and then we have our wing back. Okay, we teach the defender holding the hand shield to hold that bag on his hip because that is the aiming point that we want our wing back to take. We want him to attack the hip of the defender, okay? Um, and what we teach, we kind of teach old school shoulder skills where we do focus on getting our head out of the play. So if we're down blocking this direction, let's say we're running buck out this way, and we want our wing to down block on this guy. He is going to use his shoulder, and he's going to create that wide platform by taking his left uh, uh, thumb and putting it in his armpit, creating a big wide platform. All right, when he comes off the ball, just like this, and that's kind of hard to see, and we're going to drive that shoulder to the hip. Okay. Years ago, we talked about getting your head across and getting your head in there, but we want to try to eliminate those head shots. Okay, we want to make sure the game is being played as safe as possible. So we focus on these guys really attacking that hip, all right, with that shoulder and that wide platform. Okay, now he's probably want lined up a little wide, okay, uh, for my liking, but he does a good job staying low and attacking the hip of the of the uh, defensive end. Okay, and we talked about running our feet and trying to finish our feet through contact. Another big point. All right, so low pad level attack with that shoulder. All right, keep your head out of the out of the game. Okay, we're not trying to have any head injuries right, in that regard. Okay, same thing, different kid. Okay, has decent pad level. Comes off, creates the wide platform with his uh, forearm and his shoulder. Pretty good. Okay, kind of a coaching point here. This kid his doesn't get his thumb in his armpit, so he creates a weak a weak platform, a weak shoulder here. We want to make sure that he's really kind of focused on creating a big shoulder block. All right, so we talk about making sure we take that thumb and put it in our armpit. Okay, this is one of our young guys right here working the drill today. Okay, and you'll notice one of the things we talk about with our path is we want to attack right now to it. Okay, we want to take this angle. Okay, we're going to step with this outside foot. We're going to focus on attacking right, and getting through here. You're going to see his first couple steps take him up the field and rounds his angle off. Okay, that's going to get you beat. Okay, that you know that's going to make us uh, uh, put us in a, a tough situation. So he's got to work on being a little bit flatter with his angle there. Okay. And lastly, we do a similar type setup and drill right, with our tight ends. Okay. Um, and so we kind of set the same type of thing up. Tight end here is just serving as our tackle. Okay. Um, this is the tight end that's actually doing the drill. Then we got a bag holder. Similar type concept. We want to work on breaking down that hip on our block. <clears throat> so he's going to come off. All right. Low pad level. Drive that, uh, that shoulder into the hip. All right. And work on getting a, a big push. Would like his base to be a little bit wider here, but he does a good job with his pad level and staying low, okay, and getting into that hip and driving. Okay, not bad here. 
to have a coaching point. We're trying to work on with this kid. Uh, this is uh, a returning tight end for us, but he has a uh, has a hard uh, time gaining ground on his first step. So it's going to be kind of a continued focal point. You'll see he steps underneath himself. We want to focus on getting that first step to drive out. Uh, so that's something that we'll focus on as we get into fall camp and things like that. Okay, because um, if he doesn't, he's kind of playing catch up. So that's a big deal for him, taking that first step and driving out as opposed to stepping underneath himself. All right, that'll be a good coaching point for him. Okay. All right. So, guys, hey, that's uh, that's pretty much all I got for you as far as, you know, presentation, things like that. So the next uh, little bit of uh, today is just kind of an opportunity if anybody has any questions um, or anything like that, I I'm here to help. Uh, I got about 15 minutes before I got to head out. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to unmute yourself and uh, ask away. First off, Coach, thank you very much for your presentation. It's very informative. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm from Panama, Republic of Panama. We coach down in, in Central America, so we've been running double wing for a while. Um, we also a little bit of single wing and and uh, and some spread. So I understand uh, not as air raid ish, but more of a speed spread. Um, but what's called, I understand where you come from with that with with, with combining a little bit of the air raid into that. Right. So really great stuff. I appreciate it. Thank you. I was going to ask you a question. I, 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 um, it's more about blocking rules, but I don't know if it, we'll let, leave that for another day when you, you know. Yeah, we, we, we can talk about it now. I think we'll be all right. Um, okay. Well, my, my whole thing is this. In our blocking rules with our power and our counter game, our counter game we, we basically have, we're very wing T-ish. Um, because we, initially we're more T based. We we're, we we come from a wing T background from you know for many years, and then we moved into the double wing and, and such. So we've we've basically uh, chosen two ways of blocking power play side, which are either the, the, the traditional gap down backer, or what we've been using sometimes when we're getting a lot of head up, um, not as much uh, gap defenders as we we go gap on backer, and. Uh, and I know that Murphy, for example, his whole thing these days is is, uh, is on down. I don't. I think he even got away from that. Now it's all like just gapping. So I don't know. What do you guys do with as far as you know your play side blocking rules for power? Yeah. So so for us on power counter and trade, we, we kind of treat them all the same. They're, we we treat them the exact same as far as uh, our rules for the front side. Um, so for our play side guard, play side tackle, and tight end, uh, the rule is gap down um on to backer that's kind of the general rule we have so gap down on back we kind of teach them that progression you know so if i'm the if i'm the guard uh and you know i'm the right guard we're running power right they go through their progression do i got a guy in my gap no do i got a guy to down block on no do i got a guy on me yes okay i'm blocking that guy and so we teach them that progression you know obviously if it's no to the first three i climb to a backer so we do teach that same exact uh kind of principle there the one thing that we do a little bit different is that our tight ends, our play side tight end on counter and tray and power, uh, they have one different rule, and it's something that trumps everything, and it, it's also with communication, is we do not have our play side tight end on those plays uh, do solo or one-on-one -on -one down blocks. Um, you know, so if we're getting like a 4-4, four, four, we see a lot of like 6-2, so we'll have a guy head up the guard, a guy between, you know, the tackle and the tight end, and then an outside linebacker right outside that tight end, right? And so we'll see a lot of that, that type of look. So with our rules, if we're running power, we would have the guard and the tackle double team, and then it would put our tight end on a solo down block right at the point of attack. We don't want to do that. And so what we do is we make a tank call with our tight end on that play side. So that's kind of the one thing we do that's a little bit different. I think people call it a funnel call. I think Murphy called it like a funnel call that they make. Um, so we just we avoid that. So that's kind of like the, the one rule that trumps everything. We, we kind of drill into our young tight ends, even our incoming fresh right now. What's the one thing we want to avoid? They know one-on-one -on -one down blocks, one-on-one -on -one down blocks on power, counter, and trade. If it's bucked, we're okay uh, because we know we're trying to hit it outside. But when they're the point of attack, we don't want them blocking one-on-one. -on -one. So, 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 I'm sorry. Go ahead, Coach. Oh, I, I was just going to ask him, can you further explain the tank rule? What does that mean? What does tank yeah, mean? So, um, let me see here. I think I can move my camera actually a little bit. Okay. 
All right. I think you guys can see that. So let me draw this up real fast. This will help a little bit. I'm just going to draw up the front side. I think you guys can hopefully see those three guys. So if we ever get a, a D tackle, a defensive end, and an outside linebacker. So this is kind of the structure we see a lot, right? So we got our tight end right here. Yeah, move the end. camera a little bit to the right. That that good? Yeah, there you go. Better. Okay, so we're looking at the green. Okay, sorry, it's hard to see. I grabbed a terrible marker. All right, what we do in our rules, so we're gap down on backer for these guys. Okay, so these guys would double team. Okay, we want to avoid a one on one down block right here by our tight end. Okay, on this defensive end, we want to avoid that. And so we make a tank call. And so that tells him to go block out there. And then it tells our fullback he's now going to block here. Okay, and so when we're running power and we got our backside pullers, and I'm sorry, it's kind of sloppy. I'm holding the camera. Our backside pullers now, when they hear tank, they know they're going to have to turn up a little bit tighter now. Okay, because we want to avoid that down block on the tight end. Our tight ends are converted receivers, basically, right? And so we don't want our kid to have to block a big old defensive end in here and gar and have to guarantee he's going to get a push. So if we get, you know, some type of alignment where we're getting a double team here. And our tight end would have to down block him. He's going to make a tank, tank, tank call. All right. And our fullback on power will kick out here. Or if we're running counter or tray, all right, we do the same thing. But now our guard knows he's kicking out tight and he would go and he'd block outside there. Does that make sense, coach? Yeah, that helps a lot. Yeah. Coach, on that one, what would your corner do? Is he is he blocking out on the corner? I mean, your uh, wing our, guy, is he blocking wing? out? So what we do with our wing every single time we run power. Um, when we run power, our wing is always going to run a route. He's always going to run like a, a what we call a shoot route or like an arrow route. Um, and we, our, our coach up in the box, he watches that. And when the team stops covering it, he'll run a little shoot route or an arrow and he'll turn it into a wheel. And so we, we call so he runs that route every single time. Um, and that's how we do it. So he takes, he usually pulls somebody with him. Usually the corner comes out and asks to cover him. If he's not covering him, our next play, and if it's not our, our guy in the box, he's got to know. We're calling that next play. We're going to throw that ball out there. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. That's actually a pretty smart move. Yeah. All right, guys, any other questions? Anything about the, the practice planning or uh, the drills that we do or anything like that? I had, Coach, I had a question real quick because you talked yeah. about being, being in helmets and shoulder pads all the time. Is yes. that something that you've done for a long time? Have you had success with that? Yes, I have. We, we've done that. Um, I, I mean, since I started as a head coach, so this is going into year seven, we've always done that. Um, and then, uh, you know, even the previous head coach I worked for, he was a big believer in that. Uh, and it's just about having fresh legs for Friday. Um, <laughs> the, the one thing that was drilled in my head as a young coach was never do something at practice that's going to get a player hurt for Friday. Now, obviously, things happen. Um, we all get that. But um we preach and and the one the only time you'll hear me yell at practice is if somebody goes to the ground during a team session or an inside run session uh we don't even want our old linemen working pancake but we don't want any of that kind of stuff we want to stay up uh because there's piles and things like that are going to as when people get rolled up and people get hurt um and so we do that monday through uh, monday through wednesday when we have our pads on we're just helmets and shoulder pads we do tell the kids to wear their girdles not because we're expecting to be extra physical because the one thing that will hurt you is if you ever catch a, a knee to the thigh, you get that big bruise in there, that's going to keep you out for a little while. So we tell them where their girdles with their thigh pads and stuff, but for the most part, we're just helmets and shoulder pads. And then on Thursdays, we're just helmets. Uh, last thing about, you said you, we face a lot of 6'2 as well. And so you had the tank call, but I've always heard about maybe moving your wing back to the line of scrimmage and doing like all down blocks on that front side. Have you ever done that? Moved your wing back to an on position and then just block down on those first two guys. So now you can leave the, that six player, that end backer for the fullback. Um, we, we have not done that. Um, you know, for us, if we want to run uh, some type of concept, where we're all down block. We're just going to run buck sweep. Um, okay. We're getting like that end squeeze and we'll, we'll run our regular buck sweep. Um, you know, we do run like the old wing T down play, but we don't really cheat our, our our wing up. We just have them released right now to the backer, just like you would on Buck. Uh, and then we'll pull a play side guard and kick out over there. 
Um, but we really don't do much where we're trying to run power. If we're gonna if we're gonna get that look, we're gonna run power at uh, you know with the tank call with our tight end. The one thing we do we have done um, is that uh, this is kind of a, a different maybe a different talk for a different day. Um, we go tackle over a lot, so we call it over and flip. And we'll take our tight end, like let's call it our Y. He's our strong side tight end. If we call flip, he actually goes and lines up in the backside tackle spot, and we bring our tackle over. And when those guys come over, their rule is they're down blocking no matter what. And okay. so they would down block on that on that uh, six two that that uh, defensive end solo one on one. We don't care. Those guys can that's their that's their job to do that. The only our tight ends make tank calls. Oh, okay, cool. All right, that makes sense. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Anything about schedule, things like that? Okay. Last thing I'll post for you then, fellas, um, is just going to be um, really my contact info. So I can put this up here. Um, so you should see it now. Um, this is my contact information. I know some of you guys are going to be watching this later. Uh, for you that are, are watching the stream later on, there's if you're going to watch it, please like and subscribe on the old YouTube. Uh, but that's my email address. Feel free to email me if you have any questions or things come up. Um, if you want copies of any of the practice schedules or anything like that, um, please feel free to let me know. Um, but uh, that, that's all we got, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks, man. That was great. All right, guys. Appreciate it.